Hey, Crystal Maiden here, for part six of Sonic Adventure 2. We're finally done with that horrible <sighs> boss fight. That was pretty rough. You damn right it was. This makes the first appearance of the new Eggman theme introduced in this game. Kinda has a generic rock music feel to it, so I can understand why they don't use it again. I like how Sonic is actually taking this seriously instead of being all cocky and in control. It humanizes him. And now we have to fight the egg golem. It's so easy for that fist to come down on you. It's hard to predict where exactly it'll hit. For some reason, and I don't know why, Eggman installed platforms on the back of the statue that allows Sonic to get up to its the top of its head. Now I can understand why Eggman would do that in that he needed to install the platforms in order for him to get up to the top of the head and put the restraining bolt in its head in the first place. Because the whole restraining bolt thing is why the statue is attacking Eggman and is instead just attacking Sonic. So Eggman had to put those platforms there to put the bolt there. But he couldn't have removed the platforms, really? I mean, I guess he was really rushed for time, I don't know. But yeah, the egg golem is sort of like a reference to Sonic 3 and Knuckles with Sandopolis known Act 2's boss. Where he would attack you in a giant moving mecha that sort of had the same materials as this. Like, this boss isn't too bad, it's just kind of tense trying to get to the restraining bolt to attack it. If you stay below the swing arms, then you won't have to worry about getting hurt by them. And the camera is good enough that it's easy to tell when you're below them. The platforms move in, so you gotta speed up. Like, like you can't take it slow or the platforms will detract it all the way. I like how he seems to have a different victory quote every time that he completes a boss. Like, he ha like the characters all have specific victory quotes for beating levels depending on their rank, but they also seem to have victory quotes that are very specific to the boss fight they, they beat, which is a nice touch. I don't think this game ranks boss fights. Only later games do that, which is good because in order to get all the emblems for this game to unlock the reward for that, you have to A rank everything. I hate how this next scene has no subtitles. The audio mixing here is terrible. This is the space colony where Eggman is hiding. What? Is everyone all right? We should be landing oh, no. soon. The hatch doors oh, are open. Sweat it, Knuckles. The only thing in the cargo bay are those master emeralds. What do you mean, don't sweat it? Right? Land the Knock shuttle and off, let Knuckles. me out. We're gonna crash the thing. <laughs> Keep that up. Oh no! Don't touch that lever! <laughs> Awful. It's like they were all talking over each other and 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 Sonic screamed way before everyone else did. I mean most of the time I think the audio mixing is kind of over exaggerated as a problem, but that was just ridiculous. Where did he go now? How did you go so long without noticing that Knuckles had bailed? I don't see any dust. It makes sense that he'd know about this since he's interested in technology, so he would study this. When it was operational, it was the most advanced research center of its kind. But looking at it now... Now it's an abandoned arc, wouldn't you say? There's not much time left before Eggman fires that weapon again. We've got to hurry. Let's find the cannon and destroy it. Yeah! 
And again, another genius moment for Tails. Tails is the brains of the operation making all of the plans. This is awesome. Inside the chaos emeralds and blow up. It looks so real, even a machine can't tell the difference. I'll find the This is Tails' biggest you moment of genius in the franchise. And he's not even arrogant about it. Lost World Tails would probably be all smug about it. But this Tails is actually in character. And I just love how impressed Sonic was. Like his mouth is all gape and everything. That's basically the whole point of Amy's character. She's the comedy relief. Although I don't find her nearly as humorous as Rouge is. Like, a lot of people like to complain about Rouge's design. Honestly, I don't really find it to be a problem unless you're playing as her because then she always has her eyes half closed and she looks sleepy or something. But I don't think. I don't like. Rouge's design doesn't ruin her character for me. She's the funniest part of the whole game. I just love how she has a lot of good nature ripping on the other characters. She's a tease, but not in a flirtatious way. It's just a shame that her character was kind of not nearly as funny and humorous and entertaining after this game. God damn it! Why aren't I targeting the enemy? It's right in front of me! The targeting system has like no reach. Those things are really annoying. Again, it really goes to show you how awful the targeting system is because it's so easy for you to target those rising dynamite things or those dynamite packs. It's so easy for you to target them by accident while you're trying to attack the enemies. And sometimes you need to attack the enemies to progress through the levels. It's a, this is a perfect example of how bad the targeting system is. I didn't mean to target any of those dynamite packs. It just happened. And I love how obvious how much that was. Remember, explosives are very bad. You don't say. And I intentionally tried to get Omachao sucked out of... You can make it so that Omachao is perpetually sucked out into space and respawns and just gets sucked out into space again. I couldn't really get to work though. And this is a shining example of how awful the camera is. You are forced to backtrack in order to hit this switch. And then you have to stumble blindly into the camera again to progress. Thank god there's no enemies in this room. And again, there's more stuff on the ceiling that you can target by accident. There's really not much to say about the next levels because they're so repetitive. A lot of the time, especially with the indoors ones, you're constantly stuck in rooms where you're forced to kill all the enemies to progress. That's not Sonic. The only time I can remember the classics doing that was one time in Sonic CD where you had to beat those annoying firefly enemies that shot lasers downwards and you had to attack them from below, which was really cheap. But that only happened once. Although it's not that big of a deal that you have to defeat all the enemies to progress because you're doing that anyways because you don't want the enemies to be an annoyance because they're alive to annoy you. So you're gonna, you're gonna kill all them anyway. But I just missed how fun it was targeting a whole bunch of enemies and getting a lot of time like I did with Gamma. They originally planned to have a branching storyline, like... They wanted to have a branching storyline like Shadow the Hedgehog would later do. And there was actually one point where in order to get to an alternate level, at the end of Metal Harbor would be a submarine. And you could choose to either escape it, or take advantage of it and ride it. And which decision you made in the level would determine which level you get to next. So it wasn't really about completing missions, it was mostly about you complete the entire level, and then there's this one part where you choose to do something different in the level design, and that can take you to a different level. It wasn't until later that they decided to do a linear storyline that made a lot more sense. 
and they would have different perspectives from it, like hero side and dark side. The, ma the major problem I have with Shadow the Hedgehog's story is that it's kind of incomprehensible because of the branching pathways thing. It's kind of hard to know, like, there's no official explanation of what actually happened in the story and what is just a what if. I kind of believe that all that happened in Shadow went from dark to neutral to hero as he realized he was wrong. But you don't know. So I prefer that they went with a linear storyline that actually makes sense and you know what's canon. I really hate dealing with these enemies as the mechs. They're called artificial chaos. The ones that are standing up are really annoying because they constantly retract their head in. Another moment where you have to blindly stumble into the camera. And again, if you so much as move, or jump, the camera snaps back to where it was before. I had so much more problems with the camera in this game than in SA1. And even if the level design was full of opportunities for spin dash jump shortcuts like in SA1, I wouldn't really be able to take advantage of it because the instant I jump, the camera would swing back around to face where the developers want me to go, and so I'd be completely blind, trying to land my jump for the shortcut, but failing because I don't know where I'm going anymore. I kind of like the theme of this place, I guess. But yeah, this is another level that overstates its welcome. I mean, it's five minutes in, and I've already run out of stuff to talk about, you know? The game actually has some unused dialogue in it. Most of the unused dialogue is from Omochao. Some of Omochao's deleted voice clips would reappear in Sonic Adventure 2 Battle if you somehow got him to the goal ring. Which is kind of hard to do because your jump is stunted when you're holding Omochao, and you can't somersault or spin dash or anything when you're holding him. And you can't pick up and hold Omochao when you're, when you're the mech. So you kind of have to use a moon jump code to get all deleted voice clips up here. Omochao can say that Eggman's mustache is fake. How would he know that exactly? I don't really believe that's canon, I think it's just a joke. Maybe it hints at the fact that he's a defected robot of Eggman's, because how else would he know that? I wish they had an actual canon backstory for Omochao. Like, it would make sense that he was a, a robot of Eggman's. Omochao can also wonder how big the cat's doing, and he can reference that this game was made in America. Like he says, made in the USA for our fans. And he literally has a line where he says, am I annoying you? It's like the developers of the game knew that Omochao could be annoying. I gotta do better next time. Fuck that. Like I admire the people who are dedicated enough to A rank this game, but I'm not. I can barely even complete the 100 ring missions for the mech levels because it's so easy to get hit in the mech levels. See you in the next part.